Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is a little bit of a different kind of video today. I have decided to try to do some things for my Patreon so that people who give me more money get more benefits. So I have the $1 tier that you probably know about if you've been around in the channel, and that gets you access to the full album reactions for all the albums that I listen to, and you can also vote in the Patreon polls. Now I wanted to do something a little bit different for the higher tiers because obviously I have the $25 tier, which lets you request any song for me to make a video on, and then the $50 tier, which lets you request any album for me to make a video on. Now, the $5 tier and the $10 tier I've been kind of messing around with, but this is a little perk that I tried doing for the $5 tier. It's a, a Q&A. So I made a post on my Patreon that says, hey, higher tier patrons, I tried doing a QA and a a couple months ago, but nobody responded, so I'm trying it again. I tried doing one back when I first started the Patreon, and there weren't really many people in the higher tiers, so this is a second attempt at that. And I just said, you know, ask me any questions you have, and I'll make a video responding to those questions, and this is the video. So first question, just going to start with Tundra's question. Tundra says, for how many years have you studied music? I have, well I guess this is going to be a little bit of a backstory into myself, but I have always been musical. I've always been singing and playing piano. Let me just adjust my mic. Don't mind that. I've always been doing musical things. I started taking piano lessons when I was seven and I'm 26 now. So that's almost 20 years. And since then I've been playing piano and singing and things like that. In 2009, my parents put on a production in our house of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and it was actually pretty funny the way that we did it because we had like the first act up in our living room and then we would bring the audience outside around to the backyard into our sunroom which we converted into like Wonka's factory so that was act two it was pretty funny and I played Willy Wonka in that I was 11 at the time so it wasn't my finest work but <laughs> it's my first first time doing anything with acting um, and then I was actually homeschooled from first grade through eighth grade. So going to high school was my first time doing anything public school related. And I was super shy until I got to college. Like college really brought me out of my shell and I became like, you know, a normal functioning human being. But in high school, I did a lot of theater. I did plays and musicals for all four years of high school. And I was also in jazz band. I played jazz piano for four years. I was in the choirs. I played a little bit of clarinet. I think I did one year of clarinet in the freshman band. And then I took uh, about a year of violin lessons as well. So I know those two instruments a little more than some other ones. And then after high school, I chose to study music in college. Not going to dox myself and tell you all where I went or anything. But I got a BA in music after four years in college, did all that. My senior year was right when COVID hit, so that was kind of like a little weird. Uh, but I got my degree and then I started teaching in a private school. I taught at a private school for two years and I also started teaching private music lessons, which I still do to this day. And on top of that now, I am going to school currently to get my teaching license so I can teach in a public school. And I'll be done with that in December. So I have about a semester and three quarters left. But it's it, it's it's going pretty well. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I've been doing music for a long time, as you can tell. But that's a little bit of my background and my history with music. And then I have two other questions from Zach and Andrew, and they kind of go together. Zach says, would you make a nerdy video that educates us on your personal favorite keys slash modes or progressions and what songs have had them? And then Andrew asks, in your Villarta video, you discuss how they like to go from a major chord to a minor chord. Could you please make a video where you analyze what kinds of modes they use and their note choices? That would be so interesting. So... These I'm kind of lumping together because I've kind of alluded to this in other previous videos, but I am going to start releasing a music theory series for the $10 and up patrons over on my Patreon. And the first episode is going to be free. It's going to be like the basics of all music. And I'm just going to put that on YouTube and just so people can watch that I have it like an introduction. And then if they're interested and if you guys want to you know, hear more of that. I'm going to have a series on my Patreon for the $10 and up patrons, like I said, 
where I will dive deeper into concepts and you'll be able to ask me questions and I'll answer those questions in the next video and I'll have each video kind of individually dedicated to different concepts. So I'll have a video on just the basics of rhythm or just the basics of harmony or like how scales work, how keys work or how chords work and like what chord progressions are common in metal and things like that. But it'll be a music theory related course that is specifically focused on metal. So if that's something that interests you, keep an eye out for the first video, which will be free for everybody over on YouTube. But like I said, the rest of them will be for the $10 and up patrons. So hopefully enough people are interested in that, that you guys will come and check that out because I think that's going to be a really interesting series. And I think the interaction between me and you guys asking me questions and me answering the questions and kind of delving deeper into that would be really cool. Maybe I could even dedicate some videos to specific artists, kind of like Andrew said, and why they do these things or things that, um, that are, like standout moments from certain artists. Like if you're on my Patreon right now and you watched my latest reaction, which is to Time the Valuator, How Fleeting, How Fragile, I mentioned in there that they use a chord progression that Veil of Maya uses a lot. So that's an example of something that I could delve into and I could talk about the chord progressions that Veil of Maya, for example, uses and how that is done in music and things like that. So that's just a little taste of what's to come. So I'm happy to finally reveal it to you guys because I've been keeping it a secret this whole time and I've kind of alluded to some things and been like, ooh, Marius knows about this or whatever. But yeah, Marius was the one who kind of suggested it and I was like, that could be a good idea. So thanks, Marius, for that. You kind of soft launched this music theory metal series that I'm going to do. I think that's kind of been the natural progression of my channel since the beginning, but now I'm actually doing it. So uh, I think that about covers these questions. I only got three questions, but hey, it is my my first real attempt at a Q&A. So if any of you are interested in checking out the Patreon and asking me your own questions in the Q&A, go ahead on over right after this video uploads or maybe before or around this time. By the time this video uploads, I will have another Q&A out for people to ask me questions. So if you are in the $5 and up tier on Patreon, keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, if you have any other just general questions about my channel, let me know in the comments, but any sort of long form questions like these kinds of questions that they ask here on Patreon, uh, I will, I'm going to answer those if people ask them in the Q&A threads. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hope this was interesting. I hope you all are interested in the future of my channel because I know I am. So I'll catch you all later. Uh, see ya. Uh, have a good day. Uh, goodbye.